Let's do a few examples of the comparison test and the limit comparison test. Let's start by trying to determine whether this series converges or diverges. Well, this looks a lot like a geometric series. If there weren't that pesky plus 7 there, this would be 2 thirds to the end, and it would be a nice convergent geometric series. This is our first observation. Our first observation is that these terms look a lot like this geometric series terms. So this lends us to thinking about a couple of things. Uh, we could think about comparison or limit comparison, and the question is which would be appropriate. So it depends on whether or not this sequence converges or diverges. Geometric sequences with ratios that are less than 1, and in this case r is 2 thirds, these converge. And notice that these things we have, this 2 to the n over 3 to n plus 7, this is actually less than the geometric series. So what's going on is our geometric series, 2 thirds to the n, we're adding up all these things and we're getting a finite amount of area. And our original series is even smaller. So the area underneath this original series curve is even smaller. So if there's a finite amount of area under the green curve, there's got to be a finite amount of area under the black curve, and that's exactly the comparison test. So the fact that our comparison series converges and our comparison series is bigger, this tells us that our original series is going to converge. So this series converges because its terms are smaller than these terms, and when I sum up this, the larger terms, I get a convergent sum. It doesn't go off to infinity. So that's one way of doing it. We can say that these converge by the comparison test. If you really wanted, you could also do the limit comparison test. So again, I'm going to make this observation that I want to compare this to the convergent series, geometric series with 2 thirds as the ratio. For the limit comparison test, Remember, I have to take a limit, hence the name. And I'm going to divide these terms and these terms. And it doesn't matter which ones uh, go on top or on the bottom. I like to have the more complicated thing in a numerator. And this is sort of the more complicated thing. So if I divide by my original series, then the more complicated thing is going to be in the numerator. But it doesn't matter. It's going to be 2 thirds to the n. That's the terms of one of my series divided by 2 to the n over 3 to the n plus 7. Those are the terms in my other series. So let's clean that up. When I clean it up, I see that some nice things cancel. And this looks like the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus 7 over 3 to the n. And as n gets very big, of course, this gets very small. So my limit here is just 1. Now the limit comparison test says that because the limit is finite, and greater than zero, this tells me that both of these series are going to converge or both are going to diverge. So because the second one converges, our original series converges as well. And that's it. So we can do this using either the limit comparison test or just the plain old comparison test. The comparison test was a little bit easier. I want to show you a little bit less obvious example. Now I want to think about this series and what's happening to it. So when we have these, uh, these sort of fractions, it helps to look at sort of the biggest terms. The biggest term on the top is n to the fifth, the biggest term on the bottom is n to the ninth. So I can guess that it's behaving something like 1 over n to the fourth. But that log n, I mean, that's something that also goes to infinity. A really important thing to remember here is that log n grows much smaller than n. And also for n greater than or equal to 1, there's not going to be negative. So log n is definitely making the denominator bigger, but it's not making it massively bigger given that we have this n to the ninth that's really running the show. So let's look at this. We have n to the fifth minus 17 over n to the ninth plus log n. I might guess that it's going to converge because I might guess that it'll look like n to the fifth over n to the ninth, which is 1 over n to the fourth, and by the p-test, this series converges. 
but that's not really a proof. If I wanted to do it this way, I'd have to actually do that in a comparison test, but I, I claim I can be a little clever and do something with a direct comparison. So this is important that I have this guess. It's important that I guess it's gonna converge. That means I have to, I know what to look for. I have to look for a bigger series that converges. A smaller series that converges isn't gonna be helpful. So how can I make this bigger and also simpler? Well, that's 17, that'll go away. If I do this, I've made a bigger series. But it's still not exactly simple enough to immediately say it converges. So let me do another step. And the key is this log n. Now to make a bigger series, I need to make a smaller denominator. And if I just get rid of that log n, it'll definitely be a smaller denominator. So if I just replace the log n with a zero, I've made myself a bigger series. And this is the same as 1 over n to the 4. And indeed, I found that this converges by the p-test. So the picture is, I'm adding up these terms that look like 1 over n to the 4. And I'm getting some finite sum, that there's a finite area under here. And now my original series, I'm adding up even smaller things. So if the area under the black is finite, the area under the blue has to be finite as well. So this series converges by the comparison test because it's smaller than this comparison series and the comparison series converges. Let's do one last kind of tricky example. Sine n plus n to the fourth over n to the seventh. I know that these are positive terms because even though sine can be positive or negative, it's gonna be added to n to the fourth, which is gonna be way bigger. So even if sine is, is close to negative one, I'm gonna add it to some big positive number. So these terms are gonna be positive. That lets us, that lets us use all of the tests that we wanna use. So let's think about what to compare it to. If I have something like this, and n is getting really super huge, this sign probably isn't gonna matter very much. Probably it's gonna be a pretty small contribution. So I can imagine that this will look a lot like n to the four over n to the seventh, which is the same as one over n cubed. And I know by the p-test that this sum converges. So I have something in mind that I wanna compare it to. Now I can't use direct comparison to compare my black series with this blue series. And the reason is sometimes the black series is smaller, sometimes it's bigger. So I'm out of luck there, a little bit out of luck. I could use limit comparison test. If I use limit comparison test, here's the limit I'll have to compute. In order to compute this limit, I would have to use the squeeze theorem because I have, this, I have this fraction here, sine n over n to the fourth, and in order to say, well, that's the limit of the top divided by the limit of the bottom, I need both of those limits to exist. And the limit of the top doesn't exist. As n goes to infinity, sine n doesn't settle down and get closer and closer to a single number. It keeps going back and forth. So in order to figure this out, I'd have to use the squeeze theorem, and it would be a little bit unpleasant, but I could do it. I would say that sine n over n to the fourth is bounded by one over n to the fourth and minus one over n to the fourth. That's because sine is between minus one and one. And the limit of both of these bounds is the same thing, it's zero. So I'd say by the squeeze theorem, this limit is equal to one. And then the limit comparison test would say, well, one is a positive number, it's not zero. And it's a number, it's not infinite. So that means these two series, the black series and the blue series, they do the same thing. So since this series converges, this series also converges. That's one way we could do this, using the limit comparison test. But there's an easier way if we do just sort of a clever comparison. So here's gonna be my clever comparison. I feel like this ought to look like n to the fourth over n to the seven, which is one over n cubed. And the sum of one over n cubed converges. So I wanna make this less than something, but it's not less than one over n cubed. Well, what can I do? There's a couple different things I can do. This is certainly less than one plus n to the fourth over n to the seventh, but this still isn't exactly a p-series, so I still can't exactly say that it converges. But let's think about what happens with n to the fourth. n to the fourth is a really big number. In particular, it's bigger than one. So if I do something silly like this, I've definitely preserved my inequality, definitely one plus n to the fourth 
is less than n to the fourth plus n to the fourth, which is 2 n to the fourth. And now I've given myself a p-series. This is just 2 over n cubed. And I know that the sum 2 over n cubed converges because it's a p-series, p is equal to 3. That 2 doesn't matter. I can just boop, take it outside here. So now I can say just by the normal convergence test, since my real series has terms that are less than this series, and since the bigger series converges, I can conclude that my original series converges as well. So putting in a little bit of creativity here saved us having to do a horrible limit with a squeeze theorem.